Hi, Ben Constable with you discussing how to use Enterprise Architect to design your ArcGIS geodatabases. But first, what's the benefit of creating a visual model of your geodatabase schema? Simply put, it can improve communication, help reduce implementation costs, and potentially speed up the overall development process. To illustrate, when we want to build a house, Typically an architect or draftsman will draw up blueprints first. Why? Primarily as a communication tool. It gives the builder and homeowner a shared vision of what will be constructed. Others benefit as well. Other tradespeople like the electrician or plumber. They quickly understand what's required of them without knowing all of the construction details. Regulatory bodies too like local council, can also use the blueprints to approve building permits and so on. Importantly too, such planning reduces costs. It's certainly cheaper to make structural changes at the drawing stage rather than when the house is already being constructed, or worse yet, complete. In geodatabase development, your geodatabase designs are the architectural blueprints. And as the spatial expert, your role is much like the architect. Your visual geodatabase design lets you communicate with other stakeholders, like customers or managers, even if they aren't conversant with spatial jargon. And as you incorporate feedback and alter the design of the database structure, you're doing so at an abstract level first, before such changes become expensive. So if we're willing to make designs for a single house, how much more should we design a geodatabase that may be responsible for managing thousands of houses or other assets distributed over a wide geographical area? Now, do you serve as both the spatial architect and geodatabase implementer, that is the builder in our illustration? Well, a good geodatabase design offers you something more than the simple drawings offer our architect and builder. Yes, from your geodatabase design, you can automatically build the database using Enterprise Architect and Arc Catalog. In this webinar, I'll show you how. The goal today is to show you how to design and implement your own geodatabases using UML. So first, we'll model an example geodatabase. Second, we'll use EA to check the design model for correctness. Then we'll export the design to our Catalog. In our next webinar, I'll demonstrate some advanced ArcGIS modeling techniques. And in our final session, I'll show you how you can leverage existing Visio models by migrating them to Enterprise Architect. Now let's consider the example design we'll create during this webinar. If you've seen our ArcGIS videos before, the example may be familiar to you, but I'll explain the design process more thoroughly during this session. Here's the example model that I'll rebuild from scratch. It's for a company that deploys smart meters to replace old electric power meters in homes. They need to track houses that have a smart meter to locate and identify them easily. During deployment projects, they'll create maps that show the deployment of smart meters in a given area. A geodatabase can really help in this scenario. The houses have spatial information because they're located somewhere. Here I'm treating the house as an ArcGIS point feature class, so they'll represent a dot on my maps, for example. For the smart meters, I won't store any geographic properties, so I'll design them using an object class or table. I'll use a relationship to specify that a house can have zero or more smart meters, and that a smart meter belongs to only one house. So how did I arrive at this finished model? Let's go through it step by step. First, download and install Enterprise Architect 12, then make sure you use the right edition. For ArcGIS modeling and schema export import, you need a license key for professional edition or higher. How do you check what edition your license key provides? Use the main menu, Help, About EA. See, I'm using version 12 or higher. And the bottom right corner shows that I'm using Ultimate Edition, which provides EA's complete feature set. But as long as you have Professional Edition or higher, you're right to go. Well, now that you have EA set up, you need to open a project or create a new one. 
Let's create a new project. Simply name the file. And notice that I'm prompted to choose a model pattern. This is a handy way to kickstart your design. And we have model patterns specifically for ArcGIS. So choose the geospatial technology, then the ArcGIS workspace. The legacy pattern is basically the same thing, but includes the foundation ESRI elements that were previously used by Case Tools. Just a tip, if you have an existing EA project, you can always open a model pattern later by clicking the model pattern icon in the project browser. Notice in the project browser, I have a top level ArcGIS workspace package. Under that, sub packages to put my features, domains, and spatial reference information. I don't have to use this exact structure, but it'll do for my example. The model also gives me diagrams with handy tips on how to get started. Now I'll add the house feature class and my smart meter table using EA's ArcGIS toolbox. For our house concept, drop on a point class. Then open its properties and rename the class appropriately. And notice the set of available ArcGIS properties that you can adjust here. For this example, we can just use the default values. Now for the smart meter, use a table element, as we're not assigning any geometric shape to it. And as before, rename it. Now we'll add fields to our classes, starting with global IDs to identify our elements. We drop a field from the toolbox onto the class. And let's create a house ID using the ArcGIS global ID data type. Likewise for the smart meter. We'll trace smart meters to houses, and perhaps other buildings, using a foreign key. So we'll name that field Building ID. And we need to give it a type of ESRI field type GUID for compatibility with the global ID fields that it'll refer to. We might track various other data, like the type of building material, so we can categorise houses. And notice the available UML properties for each field. Apart from the name and the initial value, we have various other ArcGIS specific properties here under the tagged values. We can set the length, scale, precision, etc. So now I have the key fields to relate houses and power meters, but I haven't specified how they relate. I can use an ArcGIS Relationship class to do that. For one-to-many relationships, this is just a UML association. So I choose that from the toolbox and draw from the house, my origin class, to the smart meter, my destination class. Right-click to view the properties and name the relationship as I want it to appear in the geodatabase schema. I want to specify that a given smart meter belongs to only one house. I'll name the source role to reflect that. In the geodatabase, this role name becomes the forward path label. I set the multiplicity to 1. Now for the target role, I wanted to specify that a house has zero or more smart meters. Now we have to map the origin primary key and foreign keys to those fields we defined. Using tagged values, we have the primary key, house ID in the house class, 
The foreign key in this relationship is the building ID field in the smart meter table. Now we don't need to worry about the destination keys in this simple relationship. However, if you need many-to-many -many or attributed relationships, use the association class option in the toolbox. I'm highlighting it there now. Looking at our material field in the house class, wouldn't it be better if we could predefine some known material types? Well, we can use a coded value domain to do this. You can create this in any package, but I'll create it in our dedicated domains package to help organize our model. I drag a coded value domain element from the toolbox and name it building material. I want two coded values, one for brick houses and another for weatherboard. One domain coded value has already been created for me by the toolbox item. The coded value name is listed first, then the coded value. We modify these to suit using the Attribute Properties dialog. I define the value using the UML Attributes Initial Value field. Now I create the second coded value via the toolbox using the domain coded value item. I'll name it weatherboard. And just ignore the attribute type for domain coded values. As before, set the initial value, this time using the value WB. Now let's look at an expanded model where we can use our coded value domains and leverage other UML concepts for ArcGIS schema modeling. In my complete geodatabase design model here, notice the use of UML inheritance. Firstly, I have an abstract parent class here to capture the building concept. Because I have two types of building, house and office both of which inherit the field street address. So even though the geodatabase doesn't support abstraction as such, I can still use it at design time to make the model easier to understand and maintain. In the generated schema, only these two concrete classes will be created, along with their inherited fields. Also notice I use the ArcGIS concept of subtypes. What I'm modelling here is that houses, in a given instance of my geodatabase, will fall into two categories. They'll either be brick or weatherboard houses. And by default, a given house will be created as a brick house because of the subtype field here in the house class. Well, how do you specify a default subtype? Notice the initial value in the subtype field of the house class? Yes, the value 0 corresponds to the subtype code of the brick subtype. Now how does each subtype override the material field type and specify a default value? To begin with, I drag the material field from the house class in the project browser to my subtypes in the diagram to create a local redefinition if you like. And notice the type and initial value of the material field in the subtypes? I set these to match the definition of the building material coded value domain. Now let's specify the spatial reference information for our workspace. Look at the spatial reference package created for me by the ArcGIS model pattern. It contains this diagram with a spatial reference element. This element hosts information like the coordinate system and tolerance values. I can use this element as a single point of control to refer to 
and modify the spatial reference information for my feature datasets and feature classes. We can choose from any of the predefined spatial references supported by ArcGIS. Let's just choose a random coordinate system for now. Under Geographic Coordinate Systems, World, WGS 1984. Now the default spatial reference properties are all pre-filled for me. And we'll use these settings on our feature dataset package. Go to the ArcGIS tag values and simply point to our spatial reference element. While modelling, you can check that your geodatabase design is semantically correct using EA's ArcGIS model validation function. As a best practice, always run the model validator before exporting your model to Arc Catalog. The simplest way to run EA's ArcGIS model validation is to locate the workspace package in the project browser, then right click and choose extensions, ArcGIS, validate ArcGIS model. But here's a tip for those of you using the corporate and higher editions of EA. We actually provide the latest validation script online. What's more, we supply the source code, so you can customize our validation routine to suit. So where would you look for this script? Just head to sparksystems.com forward slash ArcGIS. From the listed resources, choose Validate ArcGIS Models and follow the validation script link or save it as a file and run it using EA's model scripting tool. Sometimes this script contains validation updates that aren't yet in the official EA installer. Back in EA, find your workspace package in the project browser. Right click and choose Extensions, ArcGIS, Validate ArcGIS Model. The validation progress is shown along with any errors which you can trace back to relevant classes and fields. Take for example this error about an invalid default subtype code. It says the subtype code I chose as the default for my house class doesn't match any subtype. Double clicking highlights the offending field in the project browser. Now locating that in the class diagram, sure enough that value of 5 doesn't match any subtype. Now I'll change that value back to the correct value of 0. Now you may have noticed that my smart meter table is modelled inside a feature dataset which isn't allowed in ArcGIS. The validation feature warns you about this fact, but EA's schema exporter is smart enough to put it in the right spot. So you can just please yourself where you model your tables. OK, let's generate the geodatabase schema. EA generates your ArcGIS schema using Esri's XML workspace format, which our catalog can import to create your geodatabase. To generate the workspace document, locate your workspace package, then either right click or use the extensions menu for ArcGIS. In the export dialog, specify a target file path and note that ArcGIS is selected automatically as the XML type. Now click export. And here's the resultant XML file shown in EA. All my workspace elements are in there. My domains. My feature dataset. And my smart meter table. Now we can import the workspace file into our catalog. I create a connection to a local folder here in Arc Catalog 10.31. Under that I create an empty file geodatabase. Now I use the schema import wizard to import the XML workspace document created by Enterprise Architect. Choose the schema only option. 
select our XML document. Next, we have a summary of our schema. Now finish off the process. Then we can explore our schema in the catalog tree. Notice our feature class, house, and office. Looking at the house properties, in the fields tab, we have our custom fields, including street address, which was inherited from the abstract building class. Our subtypes, brick and weatherboard, with brick being the default. Our relationship class, being a one-to-many relationship with primary and foreign keys as modelled. And the smart meter table, imported exactly as designed. Our geodatabase is ready to go. So today I've covered the basics of modeling a geodatabase using Enterprise Architect and UML. The workflow was to, one, create a simple class model of the geodatabase schema using EA's model patterns to get you started. Two, validate your schema design by using EA's model validation feature for ArcGIS. Third, export your schema as an XML workspace document. Finally, you can then import that document into our catalog using its schema import wizard. That's it for today, but as mentioned, our next session will cover some more advanced modeling techniques to help you scale up your geodatabase designs. Till then, happy modeling.